This video is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. So, you want to be like Captain America. Trust me, I get it. Perhaps you resonate with the story of a frail kid named Steve Rogers who underwent a government experiment scientifically amping up his body and mind with a mysterious chemical concoction known as Super Soldier Serum that transformed this sickly subject into the star-spangled superhero. A hero with superhuman strength, speed, agility, and endurance, an exceptional leader regarding his ability to problem-solve and strategize and inspire those around him. His lightning-fast mental and physical reflexes allowed him to turn a frisbee into one of the coolest weapons in the superhero game. How is that? Who else can do that? Hey. Hey, yeah, let's have it. Okay, that's admittedly close, but now I legally have to insist that you don't do this, please? But Captain America's powers and abilities are due to that secretive super soldier serum. Initially, it was described as a strange seething liquid coursing through Cap's blood, rapidly building his body and brain tissues until his stature and intelligence increase to an amazing degree. Captain America was a crowning achievement that was meant to signal the first of many super soldiers created through these experiments, but... A spy broke into the lab and accidentally destroyed the last vial of serum after killing the sole scientist who knew how to recreate it. We have won! Soon there will be a million like- Never! You and your accursed experiment shall die within this room! Down with democracy! Down with freedom! <coughs> Dr. Erskine! The only man who figured out how to build super soldiers is dead. But maybe he wasn't the only one. I'm uh, E. Paul Zarin. I'm a professor of neuroscience at the University of Victoria. My day job is uh, helping people learn how to walk better after they've had stroke or spinal cord injury. And kind of my nighttime work and my alter ego has been writing science communication books using superheroes. Professor Zare has already written a couple books that explore pushing the limits of human biology to become Batman and utilizing advancements in technology to invent Iron Man. But his latest book, Chasing Captain America, dives into the idea of purposefully changing human biology to perhaps transform us all into of veritable superhumans akin to Steve Rogers. So just how close are we to creating a real life super soldier serum? Closer than you might think, honestly, which is both fascinating and terrifying. Ah, screw it. Bottoms up. Suddenly it is over and America has a new champion. Oh, uh, how you doing, you wonderful nerds? Scott here, and if we want to build ourselves a super soldier, let's start with Cap's most apparent trait. Them big, bulging muscles. The dramatic physical change from a scrawny boy to... Believe it or not, this might actually be the easiest thing to achieve on our list. There's a protein in your muscles called myostatin that works to regulate the size and number of your muscle cells. They basically keep your muscle growth from getting out of control. So what happens if myostatin's muscle suppression was toned down or turned off altogether. We've seen naturally occurring mutations of this in animals like the Belgian blue cattle, who are selectively bred to keep this malfunctioning myostatin gene, resulting in double-muscled cows. Uh, there are also the victims of a slew of other health problems, and clearly hate this, but hey, more meat, more money, who needs ethics? But the problem for our use is that this mutation is something that's bred into the cattle. It's not going to help us much if we want to turn a 90-pound Steve Rogers into... We need a way to suppress the myostatin gene in people where it's functioning correctly, and there are a couple different ways that we can do this. One idea led to an experiment that created super strong monkeys. Monkeys. Do not understand. I do. 
I understood that reference. The critical thing here about the super strong monkeys is these folks in Ohio, they took monkeys that weren't with the gene deletion. They didn't look like steroid monkeys. They looked like normal monkeys. But what they did was they inject, they put an injection that wound up using an interaction of another gene that regulates something called folostatin, which interacts with myostatin. So one's kind of like a gatekeeper, and if you knock out the one, it affects the other. And what they did was they took the brakes off. That regulation of the muscle size is now knocked out in those monkeys. And uh, very rapidly, they got stronger. 20%, 30% increase in strength is a lot when you think about it. it's just happening pretty quickly and you're not doing a whole bunch of training. Imagine putting the training on top of that. Imagine adding steroids to that for really enhanced effects. But the point was, these things actually work. Another idea is to use gene editing technologies like CRISPR, which has been getting more and more attention over the years. What is driving a lot of recent coverage is something called CRISPR. CRISPR could help rid us of diseases like cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, and even HIV and cancer. The CRISPR race that's underway among scientists everywhere. In a nutshell, CRISPR is a precise and programmable molecule that can search out and cut specific sequences from DNA. From there, the strands can be repaired by the body as is, or a new sequence can be inserted in place of what was cut. Scientists in China have already used CRISPR technology to delete the myostatin gene in dogs to create extramuscular canines. And this was the proof of principle that you could actually make this happen on purpose, which I used in the book to illustrate, here's the kind of power we have at our fingertips, literally now, to go in and change what it means to be a biologically functioning human, to kind of change the range. You know, I was expecting super soldiers to look more like, rather than lean more towards the cuddly canine side of the spectrum, but no, actually, that, that does track. Catwolf is canon. He's canon! Obviously, we need to study the long-term effects of genetic manipulation more thoroughly, and most countries have a ban on experimenting with human embryos, but most isn't all. Technology pushes forward regardless, so perhaps the best thing we can do is try to use these innovations intelligently. Which brings us to... Captain America is brilliant. And I feel like that goes understated. And the sixth one was about here, 30, 40 miles west of the Maginot Line. I just got a quick look. Nobody's perfect. He may not have the same type of intellect as Iron Man's depth of knowledge regarding technology and pop culture references, but Cap is a master tactician, able to rapidly process information in the heat of battle and map the precise geometry of each and every shield throw, which is a lot harder than it sounds, trust me. That thing does not obey the laws of physics at all. Look, kid. There's a lot going on here that you don't understand. The original comics emphasized the serum's effect on Steve's brain power as much as his physical strength. Quote, Behold, the crowning achievement of my years of hard work, the first of a core of super agents whose mental and physical ability will make them a terror to spies and saboteurs. End quote. But how could we achieve this mighty boost in mental power? Well, some claim that Sudoku puzzles or Rubik's Cubes and other brain training games can help increase your intelligence, or at the very least reduce cognitive decline, but all they really do is make you better at those specific puzzles and games. It doesn't quite translate to a brain boost in the real world. Nootropics, or smart pills, may have mild effects on brain performance, but that could also be due to the placebo effect. People merely wanting these drugs to work, so it feels like they do. But I think if we're dissecting a comic book superhero, we need to discuss science that's on that same level of fantastic. A genuinely mind-blowing experiment. Yeah, this was one of the most mind-blowing experiments I've literally, as a neuroscientist, and I've been doing neuroscience for s several decades, um, yeah, this was interesting. This group uh, wanted to look at whether they could enhance basically what we might call the intelligence of, of mice. And we know that um, there's these cells in our brains called microglia, which people thought they were like scaffolding or support cells, but in fact are really important for physiological functioning. In particular, they do this thing with calcium and calcium ions, they regulate the, the speed at which your neurons function. In a human, those cells work about three times as fast as in the mouse. Wait, are you saying I'm only three times smarter than a rodent? That's not really what that means, but it means these cells are three times as fast, which is a lot in biological terms. Heck yeah, it is. Which is what made this experiment so interesting. Researchers surgically engrafted glial cells from a human brain onto the brain of a mouse, and we haven't even gotten to the wild part yet. The scientists wanted to answer three questions. First of all, would it live there? 
Second of all, would it do anything? And lastly, how long would it, would it work? So they did a couple of experiments over several years. But what they found was they put these cells in, put them into the brain of the mouse, and then have a batch of mice, which had this kind of uh, chimeric enhancement where they're now kind of a multi-species thing because they got human tissue in them, and then test them at all these behavioral things and find out whether the mice that had the, the brain cells from humans in them actually were smarter. And yeah, they were. They totally crushed the other mice. They were a lot faster at learning. They retained things more. They were just, they were super smart mice. That is amazing. These mice with human brains showed roughly a 10% increase in learning and memory formation, and I'm only slightly exaggerating when I call them mice with human brains. The engrafted human glial cells not only survived on these mice brains, but they thrived to a genuinely alarming degree. This effect lasted for a long time, and in fact, they did a couple of follow-up experiments where they found that even a year later, not only were those cells still active, but they'd been multiplying and growing in the mouse brain. They basically took over the, that part of the brain for memory enhancement and formation, and uh, that was not expected. I feel like that needs to be restated. These transplanted human brain cells took over the mouse brain, making them measurably smarter. I mean, just f forget about Captain America. This is the recipe to create Rocket Raccoon. Ain't no thing like me except me. The element that brings together Cap's physical strength and his mental prowess is this. Captain America is a pretty skilled fighter, to say the least, and although we never really see him train that much in the MCU, we know that he had extensive training in the comics. In issue 6 of The Avengers, Cap is squaring off against Baron Zemo, who attempts to show off his newfound karate skills. Unimpressed, Captain America says, quote, It's too bad your skill doesn't match your words, you arrogant killer. This is no innocent victim of tyranny you're taunting now, this is Captain America. I was adept at every form of hand-to-hand -hand combat known to man while you were still safe in your laboratory serving your Nazi masters. Where's your braggadocio now, master of evil? This speech tells us two things. Number one, holy cow, Stan Lee could write powerful dialogue. And number two, Cap somehow managed to master every type of close combat that has ever existed, which even for him would take many years of training that we never see him do. In most tellings of Cap's origin, Steve Rogers undergoes the super soldier experiment and then bam! It's got a pretty good grasp on things. I said pretty good grasp. The point is, it seems like Captain America kinda skipped over years of training that he'd need to get to this level of fighting expertise. Or perhaps he took a shortcut, having extensive combat training uploaded directly into his brain. In a wild study, researchers had implanted rats with a tiny array of electrodes threaded in a structure of a brain that's critical for forming new memories. They had these rats perform a behavioral task that required memorization while the implant recorded and transmitted the neuron firing pattern of their brains to a computer. This memory content from the trained donor rat was then decoded and effectively transferred to a recipient rat by electrically stimulating its implant with the recorded pattern from the donor. Okay, so in essence, they trained a rat to do a task, recorded its brain pattern while doing said task, and then uploaded that pattern into a rat that never had any training. What the researchers found was that the rats who received this memory transfer performed the task that, again, it was never trained to do better than the rats who didn't receive the memory transfer. They still performed a little worse than the rats who were actually trained, of course, but this, as a proof of concept, is very interesting. The study concludes, quote, once fabricated into a neural prosthesis for recipients, this unique technology could, one, immediately enhance task-specific performance, two, repair damaged or impaired task-dependent brain circuitry, and possibly even three, provide neural encoding of task-relevant information without prior training, end quote. This could be how Captain America became a skilled fighter almost immediately without much training. Just download some kung fu directly into your brain to fight Hugo Weaver. Hey, wait a minute! So, it seems like we kind of have a rough outline for how we would realistically create someone like Captain America. But, um, I'm gonna be real honest with you guys. 
When I started writing this video, I thought I would follow the same path I'd taken in previous science videos, where I talk about some wacky experiments, say how neat, and call it a day. That's kind of what I did two years ago when I already talked about how to make super soldiers. What? No, this is a brand new topic. I'm not recycling ideas. But this time, things are a little different. When we discuss whether or not Superman could reverse the Earth's rotation by flying around it, or if Captain Cold could use freezing temperatures to trick the Flash into hallucinating weird monsters, we're not doing so in a world where there's an imminent threat of those things happening, you know. But experiments and innovations that will push the limits of human biology are happening now. Like, right now. Remember earlier when I said, most countries have a ban on experimenting with human embryos, but most isn't all. Technology pushes forward regardless. That was me cleverly setting up this section of the video. We need to start having real, honest, genuine conversations about this stuff. As we become more knowledgeable, as technology rockets forward, Zare worries that, quote, we have also become less patient. We are hurtling forward at a full sprint toward a future we think we can control, end quote. It would be extremely beneficial to stop and catch our breath so we can try to have a conversation about the future of our species, but technology isn't gonna wait for us. These things are going to happen. Um, I'm not saying even necessarily that they must happen, but they will, because that's the way things work. A 1922 paper titled Are Inventions Inevitable by Ogburn and Thomas outlined 148 significant scientific discoveries that were thought up by multiple people simultaneously, yet independently from one another. For example, there were at least six different people who invented the thermometer within a few years of each other, nine or so who invented the telescope, a few who came up with the idea for typewriters around the same time, and five different inventors of the steamboat who all thought they were super original. And that's just the beginning. The paper goes on for ages, listing significant innovations and discoveries from fields like astronomy, mathematics, chemistry, physics, biology, and psychology, all of which showcase this phenomenon of multiple independent discovery. Like pieces on a chessboard, there are only so many possible moves forward at any given stage of the game, so of course different people will end up making the same plays. And some believe this phenomenon demonstrates how specific technologies are just gonna happen. As the title of the paper provokes, all the way back in 1922, certain discoveries and inventions might just be inevitable. Perhaps enhancing human biology through gene editing or other technologies like we've explored is one of those inevitabilities, something whose creation is out of our control. But what we can control is the environment in which we use them. You, me, all of us. We get to choose whether or not we create Captain America. But we have to be paying attention and we have to talk about it. If we want to create the Star Spangled Man, we should at least have a plan. I gotta admit, too often in science, stuff happens then we think about what it means after. I want people thinking about this in advance of when it actually is a full procedure available because we need to plan in advance. This is our societies around the world. This is our world. This, this is our species. We all have a take in this and a stake in it. When Captain America was first created back in the 1940s, I doubt his creators, Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, could have predicted the scientific breakthroughs that could potentially give way to a real-life Steve Rogers. The imaginative science fiction that made Marvel Comics enchanting and fantastic is edging closer and closer to reality. Someday, a product of their imagination might be staring us in the face, proving that the man out of time was conjured up by men ahead of their time. I'm gonna give a huge thanks to Professor E. Paul Zare for helping out with this video. Make sure you check out Chasing Captain America for a ton more information and incredible stories of scientists attempting to change human biology to be more like a Sentinel of Liberty. I uploaded our full 20 minute conversation to the NerdSync Patreon page if you wanna to listen to that. And also, I mean it when I say that we should talk more about this stuff. Write a comment about your thoughts on this subject. Reply to somebody else's comment. You'll have plenty of time to write everything out as I awkwardly stumbled in Perfect example. You'll have plenty of time to write everything out as I awkwardly stumble into this week's sponsor segment.
You don't have to wait until the future to enhance your body because Dollar Shave Club is available right now. Nailed that segue. We all have our everyday grooming routines. No, not that one. Just don't do that. I bet you didn't know that Dollar Shave Club, yes, that Dollar Shave Club has all your grooming products, toothpaste, body wash, hairstyling products, everything you need to look, feel, and smell your best. I genuinely didn't know that they offered so many great things. I mean, check it out. They even have body cleanser with the word wanderer on it. I'm so self-obsessed, I couldn't not use it every day. You know, because because my last name is, it's not important. It has this light soothing scent of amber and lavender and it's just, it's, it's really good, gang. You can get it along with a ton of other goodies in the Daily Essentials Starter Set, which Dollar Shave Club is basically giving away to new members for only $5. This starter set features three trial-sized versions of their most popular products that help you stay fresh and clean along with their executive razor. In your first box, you'll receive the body wash, the shave butter, the one wipe Charlie's butt wipes. You heard me. You will also receive their executive razor, which includes their premium weighty handle. After the first box, replacement cartridges are sent for just a few dollars a month. So ditch the nomad look and keep up with Cap with a $5 offer available at dollarshaveclub.com slash nerdsync. Plus, you'll be supporting the show. So once again, that's dollarshaveclub.com slash nerdsync. As always, I want to thank our patrons for supporting these videos that we make, but, and this is really awkward, I forgot that I rearranged all my reward tiers a few months ago, and I should have been thanking a lot more people here during the outro. So, thank you and apologies to Christopher Lang, Everett Parrott, Sonali Monka, Ariella Kelly, Dave Weston, Devin Goslin, Louisa Rosco, Matthias Tironi, Ryan Reed, Sean Griffin, Bart Labita, David H. Adler, David Holly, Jamie Price, John Gordon Nightingale the Second. what a cool name, Jonathan Amrine, uh, Jonathan Lenowski, Matt Valentin, Matthew Janos, Natalie England, Nathaniel Naranjo, and Zach Van Stanley. I am so sorry that I kept forgetting to say all of your names, and I cannot believe that none of you brought it up! Nah, I'm just kidding, you all are great. And if you want your name here on this ever-growing wall of beautiful people, and you want me to mispronounce your name terribly, head on over to patreon.com slash nerdsync. Click or tap right here to see a video that YouTube's mysterious algorithm thinks you'll enjoy. Is it right? Is it wrong? There's no way to know for sure, unless you check it out. Thanks for watching. My name is Scott, reminding you to read between the panels and grow smarter through comics. See ya.